Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Love for Intuitive Astrology. My name is Michelle and I'm an intuitive astrologer. I combine my knowledge of astrology with my intuition and as you can see I also have a cat and she just loves to be in the video and cuddle so I'm just gonna take her with me <laughs> in this video to explain to you all about this full moon on the 1st or 2nd of August, depending on your location in the sign of Aquarius, okay? So I will start off with a little bit of a general description of this full moon, and then I will dive in each and every single sign, okay? I always recommend you to watch your sun sign and your rising sign, and if you want, you can also watch your moon sign, okay? So this full moon in Aquarius is a super moon. It's one of the two moons that will happen in August. So this is quite rare. It happens around every two and a half years that we have two full moons in the same month. So keep in mind, this is the first one and it will happen at nine degrees. So it's fun to check in your own chart. Do you have any planets um, in Leo or Aquarius? Uh, at around nine degrees, so this full moon will be highly affecting you, okay? So we still have Venus retrograde during this full moon, and actually we will still have it during the whole month of August, right? But let's focus just on this full moon, also called the sturgeon moon. It's related to the fish of the sturgeon, and it was the best time to catch this type of fish so hence the name sturgeon full moon um so this full moon is squaring jupiter and jupiter is in the sign of taurus okay so around this full moon you might feel a little bit uh self-indulgent so maybe you want to eat a lot of nice food um you might be feeling uh like your emotions are a lot around this full moon okay there might be a lit a little bit out of control but at the same time mercury is opposing saturn so it's like i have all these feelings but i don't want to talk about it <laughs> because when saturn is restricting your mercury right it's like okay i want to talk about it but i can't i want to talk about my feelings but i can't and for some of you, this could be related to uh, an X as well, uh, because we have Venus retrograde and it's squaring Uranus, which is unexpected. So you might hear from an X unexpectedly around this full moon. They might come back. They might be like, oh, hey, how are you doing? Um, you might have a lot of feelings about that, but you're not really showing them in verbal communication. So behind the scenes, you might be like, whoa, okay, this happened. I don't know what to do. So there is a feeling of being overwhelmed. This could be not through an ex. This could be through your life circumstances, right? Maybe you're going through something or something. Uh, you, you have a lot of emotions towards a certain situation, but you're just not speaking up about it yet. And other people can kind of pick up on that as well. Okay. Um, then we have Venus retrograde squaring Uranus. So unexpected, like I said, X is coming back. Or you might have unexpected money coming in through maybe something you've done before, like a project you've worked on before, or um, maybe you had an idea about something, you kind of let it go and it's coming back. So it can, it can also be like a sudden idea, sudden money, or actually unexpected money going out. Okay, can be either or with Uranus, uh, you never know. It's unexpected. Okay, and with a square, it's like, what do I do with this? It's a little bit of a tension. Okay, like it's a sudden change of mind sometimes. This could be also in love. So maybe this is definitely a full moon where some breakups are going to happen because people suddenly change their mind. They're like, I like you and they wake up the next day and they're like, I don't like you. And, you know, some will act on this impulse and some will be silent about it. I would recommend you to wait <laughs> because this Venus retrograde, um, it does make you a bit foggy. 
the thing is that it brings a lot of old pains and old situations regarding love and this might cloud your vision about the person that you're seeing or that you're in a relationship with so don't end things super sudden okay really think about it <laughs> And after Venus goes direct, if you still feel that way, break up. But during Venus retrograde, I mean, some breakups happen and people come together after. Because you're just more internalizing things or distancing yourself. And there might be a lot of miscommunications happening. Especially with so many retrogrades, people have to deal with a lot of their own emotions right now, their own stress. So there might be a lot of like miscommunications, okay? Especially later in the month, Mercury will also station uh, retrograde. So <laughs> get ready to be confused, right? <laughs> um, yeah. Mercury is loosely conjuncting Mars, but it's quite far away. I usually take up to five degrees to really tell a story. It could mean something, but um, yeah, I prefer to focus on the aspects. Like we have Mars trining Jupiter, so at least that's giving you a lot more energy. But Mars is in Virgo, so this could be that you're trying to be very detail-oriented. Maybe you're going back to a project that you were working on and you're looking at all the details. So this is the positive side. You're going back, you revision uh, all the things that you've done, and you're like, okay, maybe I could have done that better. And now saying that, actually, I already started that for myself. Um, I have three websites that now I've really been working on. I let those websites go. I haven't done much with it. Um, and I've been starting to work on them again. And I, I'm making them better. I've been working on the speed. I've been working on uh, the text. And I've been revisioning, like, okay, how can I make this better? to actually do something with something I've done in the past because I'm definitely a person, I have a lot of ideas, I'm a little bit restless. I'm a manifesting generator in, um, in human design, if you know about human design. I'm going to make videos about that as well, by the way, because I do use them as well for my readings. I think it's super interesting and a very beautiful addition to astrology. Uh, so yeah, I'm definitely very restless and sometimes I start something that I don't finish <laughs> So at least I didn't give up on my YouTube channel, which is <laughs> maybe a good thing or maybe not. I don't know um, Yeah, because I like to try different things, you know, it's like first I was doing belly dance and then I was doing beach volleyball, which I'm still doing um, and Then now I'm do dancing flamenco as well but in the past, I've also tried capoeira and did like workouts on these trampolines. You know, I know I don't talk a lot about myself. <laughs> I'm a pretty private person, but yeah, um, in my private life, I'm really kind of an adventurer. I'm really uh, love to either be by myself or like go out and do a lot of things and be with friends and you know, explore. That's really <laughs> my personality. Anyways, um, I think I'm ready to start with all the signs. So I have this laptop here in front of me. I show you, right? This is what I use. Look, <laughs> I had someone once telling me, you're just like, um, you're just reading from anything that I've typed already. No, 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 look. This I have below my <laughs> my camera, and this is where I put all the sides, you know, um, and that's how I read. So that's how I do all my forecast with this laptop that I have below, and I read from the chart. <laughs> so, anyways, Aries, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Okay. So what does this full moon do for you? You have Aquarius in your 11th house. And Aquarius is really the sign about rebellion. It's about being with friends. And this is probably something you would like to do around this time. Being around friends. Maybe you're working on some creative project with friends or picking up something that you worked on before. 
okay this is not a good time to launch anything this is more time to get some ideas to be together or just to have fun okay um jupiter in your second house is squaring this full moon so you will maybe have a tendency to overspend around this time maybe you're having a lot of fun and before you know it you spent a little bit too much so if you so check how much you can afford to spend um jupiter does give you a lot of money opportunities areas in your second house uh, but also it um, what I've seen with my clients is that Jupiter in the second house can also bring uh, people that overspend. So it's like, okay, I can attract it and I give it away because Jupiter brings you faith. It's like, okay, I have so much faith that money comes in that you just spend it even maybe before you have it. Okay. So be aware of that. Um, Venus retrograde in your fifth house is squaring Uranus in the second house. So again, there might be, you know, maybe you're dating and you're spending a lot of money on your dates. So you're like, whoa, where did my money go? Um, could also be that you have to spend a lot of money on your kids. Maybe they need certain things. Uh, also, the schools are about to start. So maybe you have to buy them books. You have to buy, a lot, you know, there's a large sum of money that's coming. So take into account that there might be some unexpected money going out. But hey with uranus it doesn't always mean going out it can also arrive to you unexpectedly maybe from your romance um maybe they do they buy you something unexpectedly or you get a present so this is the other side of things i always want to explain the different possibilities okay so let me get you a card Let me get you some cards, areas. Pay attention to your health. Okay, we do have Mars in the sixth house. That doesn't necessarily have to be bad. And then we have Mercury, but Mercury will station um, retrograde this month. And this can cause anxiety, especially if you have Virgo on the, in the sixth house. Okay. On the cusp of the sixth house, you might deal sometimes with, um, anxiety areas. So mm, make sure to not overdo it because you are a very energetic sign. Listen to your body, what it's telling you, you have to rest. It's not a month of going crazy, going forward. Okay. It's a month of rest and enjoying yourself. There's an older man here. Um, I feel like some of you have to deal with some type of authority figure that is holding a close eye over you. So this might be a boss or a grandfather or father figure. I feel you feel judged by this person like you're not doing good enough it's almost like am i uh doing good enough by this person okay feeling tied down frustrated so there might be some frustrations coming up okay um make sure that you allow yourself to Feel those feelings because the retrogrades will bring up frustrations um, after September or mid-September. They're going to be more of a release uh, right now. Listen to these frustrations. Why am I frustrated? What is the reason? When you dive into these feelings, you will understand how to move forward because the retrogrades are showing you what is maybe not working for you anymore okay what maybe i just clicked away my screen that's <laughs> this is going great yeah so uh we're talking about frustration and i'm frustrated that i clicked away my screen no. <laughs> okay so just in a serious business um allow your and give yourself time okay don't uh pressure yourself into too many things and if you do overspend okay think about solutions and 
staying calm, how can I earn more money later on, and trust, have faith that Jupiter will bring that to you, these amazing possibilities, okay? So that's for you, my lovely Aries. Let's move on to the next sign of Taurus. So Taurus, 1st of August for this full moon in Aquarius. Yep. <laughs> I should put it on the whole sign so I don't have to click a million times, but hey, 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 that's okay. Okay, so <laughs> Taurus, Taurus, sun, moon, rising. For you, there's going to be this full moon in your 10th house of career. So you might get some inspiration regarding what you would like to do with your career. Or you might get some ideas of things that you would like to do. And this could have to do with maybe a project you've done in the past. You have Jupiter in your first house. So you're in a period where you're really experiencing new uh, thoughts on how to start a new journey. Okay, so it's like, okay, uh, maybe you're starting a new relationship, a new job, a new everything. And now you're in a period where there's going to be a lot of retrogrades. So it's kind of frustrating because you want to move forward and do all the things that you want to do. And, you know, you are, you know, when in a competition of running, when they're just about to start running and you're waiting for the whistle to go, this is where you're at. So you're like, I'm ready to go, but you're just waiting for the whistle. This whistle is not coming in August. <laughs> it will come... Um, after half, you know, after mid-September, you're going to have the go. You're going to move forward very quickly, okay? Um, you will have Jupiter for a long time in your sign uh, this year and next year. So this is going to be great. And you will figure out a lot of things about yourself that you would like to do. And it's this optimistic attitude that you're having right now, especially if you're Taurus rising, that will draw to the people that you need to meet or the opportunities that you need in order to um, get you on your path. Because first house is the first house of all the houses. So it brings you in a new destination. So sometimes you have to let go of something in order to bring in something new, okay? So it's not always about just being lucky, it's about bringing you on the right path, bringing you in the right direction, okay? And definitely there's a focus on work. Maybe you're gonna revise some things you've done with work. Um, you definitely need a job with a lot of freedom. Aquarius doesn't like to submit. It wants to be free, it wants to be in an equal uh, organization, maybe a flat structure, or you want to not work nine to five for some of you, um, work on your own, being self-employed. These are really good things for you. And Venus retrograde in your fourth house is squaring Uranus in your first. So it could be that your family is not completely in agreement with the path you're going to take they might be questioning you there might be some struggles with them uh, maybe with the career choice you're making or maybe you're moving and they're not agreeing with the move but you're gonna have to really dig deep within yourself to see is that do i agree with them or am i right now choosing me you have the optimism to walk away from situations that do not serve you right now Beware of great pride, okay? Um, okay, if a lot of things are going for you, don't get too proud. Or you have to deal with someone that's very in a mode of pride, okay? This could be someone that is trying to not make you move, that's trying to keep you stuck. You will receive a gift, okay? Um, this could be also related to family because um, Uranus is unexpected. So maybe they want to make it up to you. They want to send you a gift um, and be there for you. And it's quite unexpected. 
announcement. So there might be some announcement at work. There might be some structures or restructuring happening in the workplace. Um, some companies will definitely uh, suffer during this time also, okay? I know the summer is usually quiet, depending where you live, but yeah, there might be some announcements there. Good luck. Good luck is on your side because you have Jupiter in your sign. That's what we just talked about. So maybe also um, figure out what it is that you actually want right now. Because <laughs> maybe for some of you, you don't have very clear what you actually want. So if you don't know what you actually want, what can you do? Okay. So that's my message for you, my amazing Taurus. Thank you so much for being here. I also do private readings. You find my email in the description box below. Subscribe to my channel so you will have always more healings, astrology, um, card readings and positivity. So thank you so much for being here. Let's move on to the next sign of Gemini. So Gemini, for you we have this full moon in Aquarius in your ninth house. And ninth house has to do with holidays. So some of you Geminis are traveling around the 1st of August, 1st or 2nd. And this could be a trip to visit your siblings. This could be a trip to, you know, visit a city. Maybe you're making some kind of city trip. Mm, you are very, like you are someone that most likely likes culture likes to know and learn about things that you're visiting so you just you don't just go to a place to uh to go only to the beach you are someone that wants to learn about the culture you're very curious okay and this is also because you have aquarius in the ninth house aquarius is a very curious sign it wants to do everything out of the box so you would go for a holiday maybe that not everybody's going to you would go to a place where you feel that you can learn from, okay? And that you can soak up information from. And you could even write in a blog about it or be like a travel journalist. Um, yeah. And Venus is retrograding your third house. So I want you to be aware that communication might not be 100% on point around that time. Um, basically, the whole month of August is going to be a little bit of a struggle and also we have Mercury retrograde coming up. So be aware, like if someone misunderstands you, is that because, uh, you know, maybe there is a bit of fogginess because of the retrogrades, okay? So be aware that you don't get into a fight because people understand you wrong. They might actually understand you wrong, not for the, for the bad reasons or something. So Uranus is squaring Venus in the third house. So once again, um, maybe you misunderstand something okay uh there might be like sudden mm, like an outburst or decision you're making in your relationships maybe you feel that the person you're with like i'm just leaving <laughs> i make like a rash decision so make sure that you really think about it and not making super rash decision because we have venus squaring uranus this full moon is also squaring Jupiter in your 12th house. Uh, so be aware of um, maybe overindulgence or drinking a bit too much. Okay. Don't um, take too much around this time. Like don't drink too much or take too many substances or anything. You know, uh, I'm not your mother. I will not tell you like to not do anything. But I also I just tell you according to the astrology, like don't overdo it around this day. Okay, uh, friendships can still be a little bit in a, a difficult phase. So some of your friends might need a lot of your help. Um, yeah, that might be a bit frustrating for you. Let me get you a card. This full moon in August. Let's go. Time to go out and have fun. Okay, so even though... Yeah, it feels like it's time for a trip or even if it's just a day trip or a day off, you need some time off, okay? Yeah, you need some time off. Your meditation could be on point, by the way. So 
it would be a good time to really focus on your spirituality to do a med to do meditation and to do a lot of self-healing this is a beautiful time to do that it's a really great time you will be shown the way so it could be that you're in a phase where you're like in between so you're you're like i don't know what to do next i'm in this blank state and on the one hand i know it's gonna be okay but on the other hand i don't know really where to go uh know that this phase will pass okay this is a phase where you're gonna be a bit confused because it makes you think about things and then after a while the clarity will come when everything is more direct so allow yourself to be confused sometimes okay so that's my message for you my amazing gemini if you like this video subscribe to my channel so i know that you want to see many more of my videos and i can spread the word of self-awareness true astrology and true intuition and um thank you i really appreciate you and the donations and your support that's so amazing thank you so much let's move on to the next sign of cancer so cancer you have this full moon in aquarius in your eighth house let me get your chart up in your eighth house okay and it's opposing the sun in leo in your second so definitely there is a bit of a subject around money and this could be related to your friends so maybe there's some uh tension between you were loaning money to a friend or they're loaning money to you okay if you're going through some kind of workshop or organizing one make sure you get your money the way your money works in order so that there's not really any confusion uh, this is though a time to meet a lot of new friends and for some of you you might actually uh, go back to old friends or like re meet new friends that uh, or people you've met before they're coming back and you're picking up the friendship where it was uh venus is retrograding your second house so there might be some confusion on money situation once again this could be true your work um maybe you are paying for your friends and they're not paying you back these things can happen around this time so if you're not comfortable paying for them <laughs> don't do it just split the bill i'm dodged so no shame in that um we like to split the bill right family wishes coming true so some of you cancers that are watching are pregnant or have a wish to become pregnant okay um just be very much aware that when you do that you take it very easy because the south node is in your fourth house so that means letting go so if you do get pregnant don't overdo sports or any of these things around this time yeah period of prosperity and abundance oh sorry the south node went out of the fifth house yeah so actually it's better in the fourth <laughs> uh the heat is getting to me so it's a good thing actually now it's a good time period of prosperity and abundance okay um there is a lot of good ideas coming to you but i feel like sometimes you doubt yourself like you doubt your skills you doubt like can i do this am i good enough to go for this project um for some of you you want to go on a holiday but something is restricting you from going this is with saturn in your ninth house uh so it would be better for you to go maybe more on a small trip not too far away staying closer to the home okay um but keep an eye on your money on your money situation and this is not a time to confide in other people with investments and projects and all these kind of stuff it's not the right time to do that also not a good time to overly spend money on cosmetic products doing excessive i don't know anything to do with um procedures on your face especially if you don't want to you know plastic surgery this is not a good time to do that i would wait until october to be fair to do that or at least end of september um so yeah that's my message for you my amazing cancers thank you so much for being here for your donations your love your support 
I really super, super, super appreciate it. And, uh, you know, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos, more about astrology and cards and all that stuff. So thank you so much. Let's move on to the next sign of Leo. So Leo, not only it's your month, so happy, happy birthday. How crazy would it be? Like, let me know if your birthday is on the full moon, right? Uh, first or second of August, because in Australia, I think the full moon will be in the morning on the second of August. Um, but yeah, this full moon is affecting your house of relationships and business partnerships. And you're getting a lot of lessons, especially if you're an early degree Leo rising, your Pluto is very close to your descendant. So there might be a lot of shifts happening when it comes to your relationships. For some of you, you're going back to an ex. You're going back to someone you dated before, you've met before, and it's up to you. Is this going to work out? Yes or no. Okay. Venus retrograde is in your first house as well, and is squaring Uranus in the tent. So there might be some unexpected changes regarding your work when it comes to money. Um, it might be that suddenly you get money from something you've done in the past or you get the holiday money or yeah you suddenly but it can also be that you overly spend your money on your identity so buying too many clothes um unexpected money going out so be aware that you don't spend what you don't have around this time because it's a bit foggy okay like how much money do i have but the venus retrograde it doesn't become super clear if you're already in a relationship you will want to spend time together but at the same time there are going to be some might be some emotions regarding work maybe you don't like to share with your partner how much money you make or they they want you to pay more because you got a job and they're like okay you have to also pay more now um but there could be some conflict with work and money okay especially if you got a new job before all the retrogrades and people are trying to figure out how much you earn don't tell them leo <laughs> don't tell them okay i'm getting a dark man so um you might have to deal with some i would say jealousy a little bit um or someone that's not fully honest with you. So you're gonna have to really feel that if this is an ex or this is a love situation, you know, uh, this could be a boss, that the person you're dealing with is honest with you. Wow, well, okay, this one shoot out of the deck. The Romance is in the air, okay? Um, so definitely, for some of you are definitely you're gonna you're gonna date someone from the past or someone from the past is coming back um you're gonna explore maybe this situation with this person um is this gonna be lasting that fully depends on your natal chart on your situation you know some people are meant to be with someone from the past especially if you have venus conjunct the south node or you have venus retrograde in your natal chart these are people that might as well meet the love of their life during Venus retrograde. Uh, sometimes you have unfinished business with people from the past or from a past life and you need to continue figuring that out. Okay, so it's definitely not a complete no to love, but it's, it's like a make it or break it energy. Strong emotion, passionate love or hate. So is this an affair or is this serious? Think about it. Is this a passion in the moment or is this serious you're gonna have to think what is it that you want and what is it that the other person is actually presenting to you okay so that's my message for you my amazing leos uh, thank you so much for your support your donations that's so nice and you know um thank you and i hope to see you next time bye bye let's move on to the next sign of virgo <clears throat> Okay, Virgo, for you, Aquarius is in your sixth house and it's supposing Leo in your 12th house. And when the sun is in your 12th house, it's not the time to overdo things, okay? 
And that's a little bit of the lesser side of being a Virgo is that in the mid of August, you're usually having a quite quiet month. But this can also mean that you're gonna take a break, you're going on a holiday, you have Jupiter in your ninth house. So really Virgo, this is a beautiful time to take a break, to go on a holiday. Um, but you have to find balance between work and resting because this full moon is in your sixth house, okay? Might be that you are on a holiday or you're resting and work is kind of sneaking through it and asking you to still keep working. So you might be on a holiday or just you decided you don't want to break, but work is kind of requiring some of your attention during this time. Um, yeah. If you're an early rising Virgo, then Venus retrograde is very close to your uh, ascendant. So you might want to change your look or change yeah, change your look or your identity. Just be aware that if you have Venus retrograde in your chart, it's all good to change big things, but don't do massive uh, changes on your looks during Venus retrograde if you don't have this placement in your natal chart. Okay, Virgo. Um, yeah, so this is time to also take a look at your health. So if you feel that you have done too much, or you feel that anxiety is popping up, it means that you need a break, okay? Some of you have, um, I feel there has been like a cycle where there is a need to do a lot, but like maybe you don't need to do as much as you think <laughs> and just relax and just enjoy the moment. And that's sometimes hard for a Virgo because you feel like you always need to do something. But sometimes it's okay to not do too much and to relax in the moment and to just accept what comes your way okay so saturn in the seventh house is opposing mercury in your first so if you're in a relationship your partner might not be speaking up about something or you're not speaking up about something to your partner or someone you're dating it's like you're locking things up and you're not really explaining how you're actually feeling I'm getting a woman so you could be in a relationship with a woman or there might be like a friend that maybe is commenting on your work um, trying to tell you that it's not good enough so don't listen to other people criticizing you in a bad way there is valid criticism and there is not valid criticism okay you do things according to your own intuition and this is why i combine astrology with my intuition i want to empower you to make decisions from your heart and to really understand that you have the power to know yourself what to do next i'm just here a reflection to remind you flowers happiness so being in nature is going to bring you so much happiness right now virgo I see this bird, like freedom. Jupiter in the ninth house, you want this freedom, but sometimes you don't know how to do that, how to be free, how to let yourself go. Peace and harmony. The wind chimes, like go with the wind. <sighs> let it go and just relax, just do nothing. Sometimes that's all your body needs is to do nothing. You know, I had to learn that since I'm self-employed. Uh, I have months with a lot of work and I have months with not so much work. And I had to learn that when I don't have so much work, I don't always have to do something. I can also just do nothing. And when I feel this urge within me to do a lot of work, this is when I step to my laptop. And if it's a Sunday or um, doesn't matter which day, if I feel the urge, the flow of work, I work. But if I don't have that, I just don't. And I know if you are in a full-time job, this is not the luxury that you have. Then you take, when you have time off, you take the rest when you can, okay? Or in the weekends or whenever you're free. <sighs> take some time for yourself, okay? That's my message for you, my amazing Virgos. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel. 
leave a comment below how this resonates with you and i want to thank you for your donations it's so kind thank you so much and all your lovely comments they're so appreciated i always read all the messages and thank you so much for so much love <laughs> so let's move on to the next sign of libra so libra for you there is this full moon and aquarius in your fifth house and this has to do everything with your children it's in your fellow uh air sign and you know maybe you are trying to balance your uh time with your children with your friends it could also be that um your romantic situation so maybe you're dating someone or someone new and you're trying to mix uh, your relationship with that person with your friends and you're trying to be in both situations uh, Venus retrograde in the 11th house can create some confusion among friends so there might be some uh, miscommunications happening or something you don't completely understand some of your friends might turn into more than that and this can lead to confusion as well okay are we friends are we lovers what are we or you're going back to an ex and you decide to be friends but is that working libra is that really working you have to decide do i want to be friends with this person or do i want to be in a romantic situation with this person like it's so important to not always please others first but listen to your own intuition this is good for me you have Chiron in the seventh house creating a painful situation in your relationships and for some of you you're going out of yourself to serve others this is you know is this not good for you Mars is going to be in your 12th house uh, this is not a great time to do a lot of things it's already so many retrogrades and then Mars in your 12th house is telling you to slow it down okay don't overdo your work, but do watch your health with Saturn in the sixth house. It's opposing Mercury. So some of you are not feeling completely well and you're not talking about it. Um, make sure that you do get help if you don't feel good mentally or physically. Okay, there's no shame in that. Sometimes you just don't feel good and that's okay. And you can talk about it with other people. You can get your help. So don't wait too long to get help when you're not feeling your best. Okay? Admit it to the people that you can find. in. And if not, you can go to someone, a therapist or a reader or someone that you can share your story with. Okay? Deep personal strength and peace that ensures success. So the moment you're going back into your inner peace, into your inner strength, this is the time when you are regaining your strength and you can have the success that you want, okay? But this month is not the best month to go fast and crazy and all these things. This is a month to take it easy. Chain of events that will affect your life. So it's almost like some of you are leaving either a relationship a friendship you're breaking a certain cycle that you don't want to repeat anymore you're like i'm done with this cycle i am done i'm gonna cut this person off and you know i heard so many times and this is a misconception of of spirituality is that you have to be nice to everyone accept everything this is not it you have to be have compassion for everyone accept them for who they are but by accepting them who they are is that something you can deal with and this is a, such a big question i had to tell myself i was accepting everything everyone for who they were but at the cost of me i was sacrificing myself completely to please them that's not compassion for yourself so i decided i will love them for who they are but not in their presence i will love them from a distance i know some of you needed to hear this so i'm i wanted to share this story with you so that's my message for you my amazing libras if you like this video subscribe to my channel 
leave a comment below how this resonates with you and thank you so much for your time and for being here i really appreciate you thank you so much let's move on to the next sign of scorpio so scorpio for you aquarius is in your fourth house okay so especially if you have Scorpio rising, you might have grown up in a quite unusual family situation, okay? If you have Aquarius on your fourth house cusp. Um, so this is a time maybe you want to spend with your family. Maybe you're going to your family and you're gonna work a little bit on your, on your work. <laughs> maybe you bring your work with you if you can. Uh, maybe you feel inspired when you're with your family or they might be giving you some ideas about work that really are helping you okay it could be that actually some of you scorpios want to visit your family and be without your partner just for a little bit to take some distance to have some clarity okay um and this is because this full moon is squaring jupiter in the seventh house but this is a wonderful year for a lot of scorpios to meet the right person now we have venus retrograde so unless you have venus retrograde in your chart uh venus in the 12th house or venus conjunct south node these are people that are coming back with someone from the past or people that are um going back to someone from a past life this can happen during venus retrograde if you don't have these placements nine out of ten times this going back to your ex or uh, meeting someone new is not the best time okay um, so don't pick the first person that you see if you're single but really be a little bit picky <laughs> about what you want Scorpio okay so because I know once you feel passion for someone you're attacking and going into it and you just lose all side of things and this can lead to a heartbreak okay so make sure that you choose with a little bit of distance the right person for you if you're already in a relationship then you know this could be a year to get married as well so next year or this year but i would not recommend this full moon for that okay um so yeah venus retrograde in your 10th house is bringing back maybe old projects um you're picking up something that you've done in the past um, something that maybe you're going back and really revise everything that you worked on uh, in my own situation I'm a Scorpio rising some of you know um, and I actually have been picking up websites I've been picking up my astrology website a blog and I also worked on a, a website that I built that I was like okay I kind of left it and now I'm going back to that so this is a great time to do stuff like this and for some of you, you're even going back to like an old boss, okay? Going back to an old job. Okay. Someone is leaving your life. So I feel that maybe someone you put on a pedestal, because we're talking about a chair here. Someone you saw very high or you thought very highly of, you're changing your mind about this person, okay? This could be because it's Saturn opposing Mercury. So maybe you're not really talking about it, but your feelings are like, you're not really sure what to do. You're not really sure what to do. Even if you're in a relationship, there might be some unclear situation, temporarily situation. So know that this is temporarily. Don't make hasty decisions right now, okay? I'm getting indecisiveness. That's so crazy. I just said it and now it's here. Allowing your life to ramble aimlessly, okay? So, like the wheel and the wheel of fortune, things will turn in your favor back again. So when things are difficult, don't cut people off because I know Scorpio, just like me, we cut people off sometimes when we have enough, uh, but not after careful evaluation. Most of the time you evaluated that very well. So think about it before you make decisions. Okay, this might be also irritation towards some of you date or maybe uh, some of your friends because Mercury is in your 11th house. April, could be a person you met in April. 
or your birthday is in April, you have a sun or, you know, if you have a rising or moon Scorpio, keep your life in balance. So, you see the skills here. It could be a Libra person that you're dealing with as well. Uh, this is a nice time to maybe do something in your garden, to change your home situation, you know, redecorate a little bit. But no major changes right now. I would not recommend that. So that's my message for you, my lovely Scorpios. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment below how this resonates with you. And I want to thank you so much for all your support, your love, everything. I so appreciate your comments. I read all of them and it's amazing to, to see the love that, you know, how we all are connected with each other. So thank you so much. I super appreciate it. So let's move on now to Sagittarius. So Sagittarius for you, it's in your third house. Okay. This full moon in Aquarius. And that means that a lot of you, uh, Sagittarius, you're going to travel. So around August, you may be going on a trip. You might be visiting uh, your siblings or you just want to, you know, get away. And uh, the only thing is that maybe when you are away that your work is going to be pulling you back and asking you questions. And it might be that you, you're in a holiday and suddenly there's new clients coming in. So because the full moon in your third and ninth house is squaring the sixth house. So work is like, oh, but I have some work for you. Or can you look this up? Um, so try to rest in between if that is happening. Okay. If that is asked from you. Um, there might be a situation where you're not speaking up to your family about your work situation. Or you might not be speaking up to your work about a family situation okay because saturn in the fourth house can bring some type of difficult family situation and it might be that you're kind of suppressing that or you are in a situation where you and your family are maybe not on the best terms right now um this could be your own family or your own parents this is because saturn is creating this karmic cycle and in some cases, it, it is asking you to take care of your parents as well, okay? It's just a really little bit of an uncomfortable situation with the parents. Spiritual guidance, protection from harm. So Sagittarius, it's really time to focus on your own spiritual journey. Some of you may be even doing a spiritual retreat in this holiday. Or you're picking up a study that you left off and you're going back to that now. That's because Venus retrograde is in your ninth house. So maybe you're picking up something that you didn't finish and you're right now like thinking, okay, I, I definitely want to finish this study that I'm doing or this workshop or, you know, or you're traveling to CNX for some of you, okay? Um, traveling abroad to meet someone that you were dating in the past. Uh, will this work out? Only time can tell. Venus retrograde is not the best time to meet new people, but it really depends on your natal chart, okay? So the real judge is when Venus retrograde is over. So there is a tendency to want to work, but also that not going full onto that, okay? So there might be some extra work with the work you're already doing, and it might be like like chasing you you will be taken care of in difficult times okay because your family situation is not the best right now Sagittarius like you have Chiron in the fifth house so maybe your child needs a lot of care from you your family needs a lot of care from you um there's definitely some karmic cycle happening with the family situation and it's creating a bit of pain and fogginess and you know, this could also have to do with your house situation. Maybe there is some, you need to rebuild a house or something like this, or you signed a contract for a house and it's just not, it wasn't as you thought it would be. A marriage will take place, either romantic or a business. 
So there will be a new commitment for you coming in. Like I said, for some of you, uh, depending on your chart, this might actually happen during a retrograde, but for others, this is a commitment also to yourself that you are here to save your marriage and you're here to save your business. So maybe all the things you're doing now is to save all of these things. Maybe because your family situation, your relationship is not going as well as you wanted it to be. Great happiness and May. So your birthday might be in May if you're moon and rising Sagittarius. But I feel your happiness is in music. So I don't know if you play an instrument or you like to listen to music and that's really bringing you in a state of peace. So yeah, if you can listen to music, do that. Sagittarius, hang in there, take a break, go on a holiday, do the study that you love, go on this retreat, work on your spiritual journey and you're gonna be absolutely fine. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your donations, your support, your love, really, it's unbelievable. And um, thank you, really. And next, let's go to uh, Capricorn. So Capricorn, for you, this Sagittarius full moon is in your second house. And second house has, has all to do, do you want to sit here? Come, is this meowing? Come here. No? Do you hear meowing? Yeah. Do you want attention? I'm making a video now. Hmm? So anyways, Capricorn, this is for sun, moon and rising Capricorn. And for you, this full moon is all about money. So your money situation, you're going to look in, um, you know, maybe have you overspent to your children? Are you overly spending to romance? to your partner, to someone you're dating. Uh, and this is because this full moon is squaring with Jupiter. This creates overindulgence as well. So maybe you've been going for a lot of dinners and you've been spending a lot and you're like, okay, maybe I've overdone it a bit too much. And Venus is retrograde in the eighth house. So it could be that you are going to come back with an ex on a sexual level <laughs> and uh, you're gonna have to really like realize if that's gonna work out or not so you can experience it and it really depends on your natal chart okay if you have venus retrograde in your natal chart or you know venus conjunct south node or in the 12th house you can come back to a past lover but this could also be led by passion okay by maybe it's just passion so really think true is this someone i want to stay with if that's the case for you um there could also be some money issues regarding um money coming from a partner or from a joint bank account like maybe your partner is spending too much of your money um or an investment this is not a good time to do any type of investment or getting someone to invest it in you. Make sure that you make the deal after September because now is not a good time to make any type of big situations, big deals, uh, any kind of that stuff, okay? Uh, Uranus in uh, your fifth house is also squaring the eighth house Venus retrograde. So again, an ex might come back. This might get very heated. Uh, so really think about what you want from this situation and if this feels right for you um if you're studying right now it could be that you don't really feel like going into that study you're feeling a bit restricted with mercury opposing saturn or there are some things that you're not speaking up about you're feeling a certain way about something but it's hard to really pinpoint your feelings and what you can say and how you can speak up and this could be have having to do with also your family situation chiron in the fourth house means um that some of you have to take care of a family member or you're in a home situation where which is not ideal okay uh maybe with your neighbors or with the person your flatmates or the people that you live with it creates a lot of anxiety and 
it just feels that you are the one always taking the lead in this situation okay let me get you some card for my lovely capricorns yeah she's sitting on my lap yeah you will be taken care of in difficult times so if you're going through a rough time capricorn i'm not gonna lie the planets are not here right now to you know bring you the greatest achievements um it can it can if it's something from the past and a project or stuff like this can work out now but i know for a lot of you uh it could be a little bit of a difficult time so okay. hang in there persevere and you will overcome your problems so keep going keep your head calm straight collected like i know you can capricorn like i know you can and you're gonna overcome it so find this inner strength one step at a time one step at a time live in the moment like when i'm going through a difficult situation i sit with myself and i say hmm am i okay in the moment i'm okay in the moment i'm okay now okay this is like the book the power of now it's like being in the now and seeing am i okay now nothing is happening now i'm safe now i'm okay now yeah you're on the road to success so keep going you know this road is coming is going up and sometimes you have to climb up in order to reach the top right you cannot just um go there too fast and you know Capricorn, you know as no other sign that things take time and you're gonna have to take it step by step. Things will not always be this way. A change is coming. Wow, this is all confirming it. So you are in this caterpillar mode and you're gonna pop up to become a butterfly. You're gonna transform and you're, you're just now in a phase where you're learning so much about yourself and you just have to persevere and i know you can do it just hang in there thank you so much for all your love your support your donations i super appreciate it it's so kind i read all your comments and thank you for that and if you want to see more of my videos subscribe to my channel and i hope to see you next time bye let's move on to the next sign of aquarius which obviously this full moon is going to be in your first house and Aquarius, a lot of um, this full moon is surrounded by your love situation. This is either, it, also if you're single, okay, you will start to see old woundings coming back regarding your um, relationships. So old partners, new partners, doesn't matter. If you're in a relationship, um, there might be some difficulties coming up okay this is no reason to just walk away or break up but the things that you have been hiding within your body your thoughts about your partner uh might start to come up i would recommend you to make a decision after venus stations direct to be 100 percent sure if now you meet someone new and you have venus retrograde in your chart this is a good thing okay these relationships can last. Um, same if you in your chart have indications of coming back with an ex, uh, like Venus South Node, Venus in the 12th house. Uh, these relationships can last. If you meet someone new and you don't have these placements, it's going to be more difficult, okay? You're going to have to really see if this person is um, sustainable. It's going to be long term. Unless you're not looking for that no judgment then have fun enjoy yourself okay because you do have this magnetism about you right now if you are an early degree and i said it in more videos but i like to repeat it for people who see this for the first time if you're an early degree uh, aquarius sun moon or rising so see between zero and five degrees pluto is very close to your sun moon and rising this means a massive transformation in your life Things can shift from here to there, to there, to there. They're bringing up all the things that do not serve you anymore. So do not try to control the situation. 
if something needs to change, Pluto will remove it. Pluto will show you the truth. There is no way around it. Okay. As a Pluto rising myself, I know this. My life is like, has been crazy. My whole life has been upside down, left and right. I learned how to stay calm in my chaos. I learned, I had to learn how to be okay with not being okay sometimes. Okay. And learn to see the spiritual situation of what is happening and why it's happening. Why do these people come into my life? Okay. So there is a way that you sometimes are drawn to more darker type of energies and they will teach you something about yourself. Okay. So for example, um, in my situation, I have Pluto on the ascendant and these people know how to manipulate. So I do know <laughs> very much aware, but we have a choice to not do that. I use this to read people and to help them transform. This is the highest form of Pluto. At the same time, Pluto on the rising sign or moon, uh, moon or sun, you're drawn to people that have these dark qualities. So even though you transformed yourself to the light, you can be drawn to people with darkness because you want to transform them. And it might trigger people because you bring out their dark side. <laughs> Welcome to the Pluto rising life. <laughs> Triggering people is my thing. Okay. March. So maybe something happened in March. You met someone in March. Your birthday is in March. Um, yeah. Jupiter is in your fourth house. So family situation is improving, but maybe your family does not fully approve of your partner. Um, or maybe your partner doesn't have a lot of money or you don't have, and you don't want to really speak up about it. Saturn in your second house is kind of restricting your money um, or making you work very hard for it. Pay attention to your finance as well. And I just, I grabbed this out of this 200 card deck. Okay. So pay attention to your finances. Um, speak up about your money only when you're comfortable. Um, but yeah, some of you are definitely moving in this or next year. Like you're going to have a lot of luck regarding buying or selling houses. Just not now. Don't do it in September or August time to get out of a situation so yeah for some of you this does mean a breakup for some of you that does mean that you're gonna leave someone behind and you're going to uh, transform yourself and see who fits you better okay so that's my message for you my lovely aquarius you know i don't want to be negative i just want to be realistic because this is the only way to transform and to you know if you see this mirror and evaluate and think you will become stronger more beautiful and you can really become like the best version of yourself because ultimately that's why we're here we transform our darkness into our strength into the light and that's what expected when there's pluto so thank you so much for watching I really appreciate your comments, your love. I'm sending you so much love and blessings in your situation. And thank you so much. Let's move on to the next sign, Pisces. So for you, Pisces, the moon is in your 12th house. And this has everything to do with you needing some rest. Okay. Um, you have the sun and Venus retrograde in your sixth house. So it could be that... Mm, even though work is maybe slow, it feels like it takes up a lot of your energy. Somehow your work feels maybe heavier than it usually does. So you're like crawling through the month of August. Like, okay, I need to, I'm just tired. Like maybe you're doing less, but it feels heavy. Chiron is in your second house. Um, this is bringing some uncomfortable feelings and unfairness with your money situation maybe you thought you would earn more than in a job that was promised or um in the end your costs are much higher than you thought it would be um saturn in the first house brings you a lot of responsibilities and it feels like 
if you're in a relationship because Saturn is opposing Mercury, that some of you are not speaking up about the responsibilities you have. It's like you're kind of keeping them to yourself. Uh, so you need to see when is the right time to open up to your partner or to someone you're seeing. However, with Venus retrograde, I said it with all the signs, meeting someone new around this time. So if you met someone before, that's fine, but there might be some struggles with understanding each other. Like, are you on the same page? It might be a bit foggy until Venus retrograde is over. Short journey. So some of you might be going on a trip. Uh, this might be a short trip or you know, you're going to visit siblings because Jupiter is in your third house. Uh, this might be a really wonderful time to visit them. But be aware that your work might be chasing you on your trip sometimes. Time to get out of a situation. So if you're in some kind of situationship or... Um, yeah, it's like you're trying to get out of a, of a situation that you don't like. Maybe it's a financial situation or a romantic situation maybe there's more than one person but you yeah could be that you hear from an ex stepping into a new experience because you're craving this new beginning okay and some of you i don't know it's really random but some of you are maybe into horse riding or you want to do like a horse riding trip or something like this wealth okay so you're gonna have to distribute your wealth and understand so you're revising what you can do with your work in order to make more money okay in order to get to the next level the next stage but you can only do that by taking a break going on a holiday relaxing Whew. because some of you need it you've been through a very busy phase okay do not back down from opposition, show strength and fortitude. So stay strong in your situation, you know, even if work is difficult or uh, you go through some difficulties in your relationship and you feel a burden and you feel like, okay, wow, there's a lot coming at me. One step at a time, Pisces, one step at a time. The last part. Lighthearted, carefree time. Give yourself some free time to think things through. Some of you are uh, maybe uh, going over something. Maybe you have a blog or you're writing a book and you're going to over something that you've written or done or going over some emails that created some miscommunication in your work. Uh, it's time to revise things that you've done. Go back to it. Perfectionate it. And so when Venus is direct, you can move forward. So that's my message for you. Thank you so much for being here, my lovely Pisces. Thank you for your donations, your support, your comments. I super appreciate it. Thank you. And I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.